from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome to theCUBE, I'm Lisa Martin with Justin Warren on day one of VMworld 2018. This is the 20th anniversary of VMware. Lots of momentum this morning kicking things off. Justin and I are happy to be joined by some folks from NetApp. We have Nancy Hart, the head of marketing, uh, for cloud infrastructure at NetApp. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Julie, it's so great to be here. And an alumni, Gabe Chapman. I love your Twitter handle, at <laughs> bacon underscore is underscore king, senior manager of NetApp HCI. Hey, Gabe. Hi, how are you doing? Good. So guys, lots of momentum. Pat Gelsinger is probably one of my favorite keynotes because he's really energetic. He even went full in with his faux tat this morning. <laughs> I was impressed. Impressive. So you guys have some news. Yes. Tell us about what's new with NetApp and VMware today. Yes. So, fantastic, exciting times at NetApp these days. NetApp is really focused on becoming the, the data authority for hybrid cloud. And part of that is what we're excited to announce today here at VMworld, is a NetApp va verified architecture for VMware private cloud for HCI. So what you heard today in Pat's keynote was a lot about connecting on-premises private clouds with hyperscalers public clouds. And that's what we're doing in our partnership with VMware here and this validated architecture for private clouds. Exciting news for us. In addition, we're also really be thr thrilled to be announcing new storage nodes for our NetApp HCI product and SolidFire product as well. Lots going on today. Wow, that's, that's really cool. So Gabe, you've been in the field a lot. Um, what are some of the things that you're hearing? You know, some of the signage around here is um, about VMware is you know, making things possible, mm -hmm. momentum, making momentum possible. What are some of the things that you're seeing in the field in terms of customers' momentum, leveraging HCI from NetApp to drive new business models, new revenue streams? I think one of, um, one of the things that I see commonly is that uh, the, the hyperconverged is a platform has been around for about six, seven years now, and customers are seeing that uh, some of the first generational approaches have got them to a certain level in terms of addressing simplicity and kind of that turnkey infrastructure stack, but where they would like to go next is more cloud integrated, uh, more scalability, more enterprise class or enterprise scale technology, and therefore they're kind of looking at the NetApp HCI product and the architecture that we've brought to market and seeing the potential to not only do things on premises that they normally do in terms of a infrastructure platform, but also move into new services. Um, how do we integrate with existing investments that they've had? How do we become connected into the hybrid cloud model with the hyperscalers themselves? And really push towards a all-encompassing cloud infrastructure platform other than just a box. Yeah, one of the things I noticed in the keynote today that, that I think relates to that, and I'm, I'm interested to hear Nancy and, and Gabe a little bit more about what customers are doing here, because it seems that the, the, the idea of it must be all cloud or all on site, that, that's gone away now. Right. It's very much hybrid cloud world, multi-cloud world, where yes. customers have choice. So are you, are you hearing that from customers? Clearly there seems to be some demand here yes. because we've seen, we've seen the change in messaging. Absolutely, and I think what you're seeing is customers want the option to take advantage of all the resources, regardless of those resources are on-premises or in public clouds. And that's what we're doing here at NetApp with our own HCI solution, is that as the market evolves under our feet, we talked about, what Gabe talked about, those first generation um, vendors weren't quite enough, that our customers choose NetApp because they want more mm. than what they can get from those first generation vendors. And what you really want to see is that convergence continues to march on and that there is more to collapse into the stack, particularly that connection up into the public cloud. So customers are, are definitely looking today, they're making buying decisions today based on that option. Right, and they've, clearly there's lots of customers who have a su substantial investment already in NetApp, so Correct. being able to use what you've already got and extend it with, with a vendor that you're already familiar with and you know how it works, there's, there's a lot of value there. Yeah, we're, we're a trusted vendor, we're a trusted, NetApp is a trusted enterprise vendor with the reliability and cu customers can come to us with confidence and choose NetApp with confidence. Mm. So we were uh, with you guys at SAP uh, just a couple months ago at the beginning of the summer, and hashtag data driven was everywhere. I'm seeing it in Twitter. Yes. We often hear many things about data is power, data is currency, data is fuel. Data is all of those things if it can be harnessed and acted upon right. in real time. Yep. 
How does NetApp HA, what are some of the differentiators? Obviously we talked about the trusted partnership, but how does NetApp help customers actually live a data-driven life within right. their organization? Well, you know, I think a lot of times it starts with kind of understanding where your data lives, uh, how you manage it, manipulate it, and secure it. So we have things like GPDR that comes across. All of a sudden, everybody's scrambling to come, to come up with a solution or a reference architecture, or some way that it integrates with it. And I think naturally, NetApp being the product uh, technology company that's been, and it's, it's lived and breathed data all its life, uh, we understand our, character, our customers' unique requirements around governance, around security, around mobility, and we've built technologies that don't lock you into any one mode of consumption. So if you bought a filer, if you bought an HCI system, if you bought a, an object store platform, the data fabric piece is the glue that binds and allows data mobility and portability across multiple platforms, not only from the edge to the core, but also to the cloud, and kind of gives you that larger, bigger picture, and we believe that as we start to see this transition, especially at edge computing, especially as we look at things like NVMe over fabrics um, and getting into new levels, and also services that we are delivering across the hyperscalers, a cohesive picture and story around where your data lives, how you manage it, and who can access it, is empowering customers to make their transition into the multi-cloud space. Right. That's, that, clearly that transition, I think, is what uh, people weren't really understanding in uh, probably three or four years ago. I was like, enterprises aren't going to be there in one spot. One right. spot. You can't just turn oh. it on in five seconds. These I things you, take time. Flipped, yeah. Right. So that with our data fabric, we're able to cover the entire NetApp portfolio from edge to core to cloud. And as you say, enterprises and different departments in those enterprises will make their own transition and go down their own journey of digital transformation in their own time. Yeah. And NetApp can really be that trusted partner for all these enterprises. So with so much choice comes, I think, inherently a lot of complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought they did a great job this morning in the keynote, Pat Gelsinger and team, of, of really uh, talking about their announcements, what VMware has done in their history, yeah. pretty clearly. But I, I can imagine from a customer's perspective, if it's, if it's an enterprise organization yes. who doesn't want to get Uberized, <laughs> they probably don't know where to start. Right. So talk to us about sort of the business level conversations yes. that NetApp has with not just your existing customers who know they can come to NetApp to trust you, but also some of those maybe newer businesses or, or um, newer and enterprise businesses to NetApp, yes. how can they come to you and say, help us understand, we probably have, what did they say this morning, the average customer's eight clouds. Yeah. How do you help them to sort of digest that, right. embrace it, right. and be able to maximize it so that their data can be available as soon as they need it? Right. So what it is is data is at the heart of the enterprise and help people help customers change their world with data, but there has to be a direct business outcome for that. So when customers, or as enterprise customers, learn to mine the value of their data, they can really build new revenue streams, they can create new touch points with their own customers to drive their businesses. So for example, one of our early NetApp HCI customers was down in Australia, a company called Pontotel, a service provider down in Australia, and they were really struggling to set up new businesses and new services to their own customer base. But when the conversation, when they worked with NetApp, what they were able to do was deploy new services three times faster over their last vendor. Yeah. So think about what that did for their top line. If this company in Contital could deploy new services, new revenue opportunities, three times faster. Blowing their competitors Deplo out of the water. Deplo blowing their competitors out of the water. That's a business level conversation. This is not a conversation about technology. Yes, under the covers, there's some amazing, fantastic technology but it has to serve the business. Yeah. Contatel has now been so successful with NetApp as HCI, is that they now are expanding into brand new geo and geo regions and bringing new services to a whole new set of customers mm. and a whole new customer base uh, working with us. And that's what I'm hearing in the conversations that I have with customers. I'm, I'm interested to hear from yourself and Gabe as to whether you're hearing this across the board. But you've got one example here yes. of, of customers who are concerned more with additional revenues, new revenue streams, new ways of making money top line. Yes. And not so much about cost savings. That, that was something that was being, we were concentrating on that maybe three or four years ago. That seems to have been de-emphasized now and people are much more interested in seeking out new ways to use things, new sources of revenue and focusing on top line. Right. So is, is that something that you're seeing across the board or is that is that sort of only leading edge companies that are looking at that? We see it across the board, I think with a lot of customers across uh, many different verticals. Um, and we'll take it, for instance, Children's Mercy Hospital bought us, bought our NetApp HCI product for 
a, a virtual desktop implementation. Yeah. And they did so for, for a lot of reasons, one of them being the traditional T, you know, TCO ROI discussion, but also allows them to provide a platform that isn't just a silo of resources. Because of the unique aspects and differentiation that we have on our platform, uh, we're able to go and do mixed workloads and do consolidation. So they're realizing savings and gains across collapsing silos, bringing multiple applications onto the same common infrastructure, the same way they would have gone and swiped their credit card at Amazon. When you do that, you don't care if you're putting you know, a, a SQL database, an Oracle or whatnot, they're going to give you the resources that you need. We want to mimic that locally on-prem for customers, so, yeah. and then also have that in integration with cloud services. So if we're building a cloud service that runs on Amazon or Google, or if we're integrating with VMware as it runs on AWS or whatever, we want to be able to extend those services from local on-premises environments into the cloud and back based on that. And I think yeah. that's really where the value is, because there's no like there's no turnkey public cloud, you know, hybrid cloud integration piece. It's a journey and you have to analyze all the applications and the way you've done business. And the you know NetApp having been working in the enterprise space as a trusted advisor for such a long time, we understand the customer's needs and we've been in the cloud space for a number of years already and we kind of understand that space. So we're kind of bridging the gap at the data level and helping to expand that more so uh, at the infrastructure level as well and as we branch into new services as, uh, as time goes on. Yeah, well you've got that challenge of every customer being different, but there's also trends that are common across across the industry and, and NetApp being the size and, and having the history that it does. Yeah. You've seen all of these things before and you know that, yes, this is unique to you as a customer, but also we've seen this in other customers, this would be of value to you and you can bring that to those customers. Right, not only that, we have this product called ActiveIQ and it tends to be a, a service and support and monitoring application, but like you said, we have a very large customer base and using features and functionalities and, and AI, we're able to use the, the data um, that we get from ActiveIQ as sort of a community wisdom, yeah. in effect, and then make uh, suggestions to those users as well. So again, NetApp does have a very large install base. What can we learn from that install base? How can we help existing customers run their operations better with that community wisdom? Yeah. We've always referred to it as actionable intelligence for your data. So like, you know, we've all played Tetris as a kid. It's, it's playing Tetris with your data, Tetris with your workloads, and making sure that they all line up so that you get the all four blocks break at the same time and get the high score, right? So it's, it's really kind of, taking and really truly mining your infrastructure, mining your, uh, your workloads and your information, and making sure that you're getting the most, uh, most effective resource utilization that you possibly can yeah. across not just virtual machine workloads, but also data workloads and understanding what you have on the floor versus what you need six months from now to one year from now. That Active IQ platform is really uh, an integral part to really understanding uh, customer's data, resource utilization, et cetera. Yeah. yeah, as someone who has played Storage Tetris, any help that you can do <laughs> is very, very welcome. I'm going to bring that back. That's the second reference I've heard of that in the last couple of days. <laughs> so one of the things that Pat Gelsinger and team talked about this morning during the general session was superpowers and the, and the need to enable enterprises to be able to harness their superpowers and maximize AI, yeah. machine learning, IoT, the edge. How is NetApp and VMware uniquely positioned to help your customers be able to take that actionable intelligence scape that you mentioned on that data to drive the new business models and revenue streams? Well, I mean, I think our superpower would be, uh, you know, information is power, so that's our superpower is being data driven and understanding how we take the customer's data, leverage it to its most effective use, and allocate it and protect it properly, right? So there's a whole bunch of different areas around what we're doing there. Ours would be, you know, understanding data, uh, understanding how customers want to use it and what kind of information they want to extract from it. And so, you know, I'm just like, I'll have to come up with a fancy term for, <laughs> you know, maybe data thriver is my is my superpower, but that could be definitely one part of it, right? You can that take a logo out of that. Data thriver? Yeah. yeah. Thriver. Or data thrivers. Yeah, I, I think like so. So Nenebit has been a partner of VMware for a very a long, long time. time. You have a large ecosystem of we partners do. as well. What you guys announced today, talk to us about some of the benefits or really the, the opportunities that that's going to give to NetApp's partner, channel partners. So there's a lot of opportunity here for our channel partners, right? As our customers take this journey, they're going to turn to their trusted advisors, their partners, to help them take that journey as well. And so what we've done here with what we announced with the uh, 
the VMware private cloud for HCI. This is a significant opportunity for our channel partners to work with their, their customers and take them down that path to be that data thriver, to harness that superpower. New opportunities for all, right? Customers need someone to help them uh, show the way and, and the channel partners are really the community to do that. So for those channel partners who are keen to go and do this, what, how should they engage with you? How should they start talking to NetApp about helping their customers to go down this journey? Well, honestly, you know, we're making a large, uh, we're making the announcement this week. That's the kind of the first step is, you know, come by, come to our booth. It's a thing. Here. Yeah. yeah, obviously, um, we have a very large channel organization. We have outreach. We'll have training. We'll have. I mean, the, the path to hybrid cloud starts with turnkey private cloud, yeah. and that's kind of what we've done here. We've, we've, we're working on that turnkey private cloud with our partner VMware and NetApp together to kind of facilitate that first step, and then we go out and work with our channel partner organizations to find the customers that want to go down that path, mm -hmm. and then they can bring their additional add on to it. So there's a lot of opportunity to go out and really kind of push and help customers make this transition between the two different worlds, and obviously, you know, we can go to netapp.com and come and take a look, and we have plenty of information there too. And just as we wrap up here, I'm curious, Nancy, to get your perspective from yes. the cloud infrastructure perspective, uh, or vision. The announcements that VMware made today, big news with AWS, launched that last year, talked about a lot of expansion yeah. going to uh, APAC and uh, a lot of work in Australia. Yep. What does that, as well as some of the other product enhancements that they announced today, what does that mean to NetApp? Right. So I think for NetApp and for our customers, because really let's just really focus on NetApp's customers, some of the announcements you saw Pat make today provides new options, new opportunities for NetApp's customers globally, right? right? As there's these new features, new functionalities, to that turnkey solution yeah. for private cloud. What you saw is ex uh, VMware expanding that relationship with AWS just gives new options and opportunities. So hopefully people can go and maybe by tomorrow get a, a, a Data Thriver, uh, I don't know, a pin or a sticker. <laughs> I have to run out to Kinko's real quick and make yeah. some stickers. Maybe print it on some bacon. Actually, I think we have <laughs> pretzel necklaces in oh, our booth to go for the beer girl. Oh, my. So. oh wow, what time is that? Soon. <laughs> not soon enough. Well, Nancy and Gabe, thanks so much for Thank stopping you. by theCUBE and chatting with Justin and me. <laughs> Very excited to hear NetApp's continued transformation and what you're helping customers achieve. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. For Justin Warren, I'm Lisa Martin. We're at VMworld Day One. Stick around, we'll be right back. <laughs>